Hi there. Well, okay, welcome back here on Prime Morning, and I'm sure you did enjoy Prime Insight. Tomorrow we're going to bring you another edition. Make sure you stay tuned and uh, be a part of the conversation. Now, speaking about that, you can join in on social media as Joy Prime TV on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter. That's where you can drop your messages. We'll be more than glad to always read from you. Our WhatsApp line is active, and so. You can also send your messages on there. Now, the number is going to be on your screens in a couple of minutes, so you can also join in the conversation right here on Prime Morning. It's a Tuesday. We're excited. You know, when it's Tuesdays, we bring you what we call the Global 11. And today, we're talking about very, very, very important, uh, you know, uh, thing that you need to know. A lot of you out there may have been, you know, part of the fact that we've always dedicated moments to speak about women speak about men and what they can do to improve on their health and today will not be an exception so please go ahead and uh, join in the conversation here on the show now uh, this is for starters now anyone with cervix is at risk for uh, a very dangerous <laughs> the way things are looking it looks like it's a very dangerous <laughs> disease and uh it's a cancer actually and that's the cancer we're talking about today now those of you out there who are on our social media page may be aware of the fact that uh or have been watching the show uh will be aware of the fact that we've dedicated uh months uh, to celebrate uh, men and women and also talk about prostate cancer, which, of course, was dedication to men and prostate cancer. So this month, uh, we're going to be talking about the uh, cancer that we call the uh, cervical, what is, what is it called? Cervical cancer. Cervical cancer. Cervical. Okay. Uh, so cervical cancer. Now, no, don't blame me. No, I'm not supposed to do this. It's my birthday. It's my birthday, and they decided to let me come and talk about something that has to do with Things I don't, <laughs> but we'll get we'll get uh, an understanding of it. And uh, doctor is in here. Uh, doctor will tell us what exactly it is, the uh, pronunciation and everything of <laughs> of the cancer. And then we'll get into the conversation. Uh, please help me welcome Doctor Avril Say and okay, I hope I got the name right. Yes, please. Okay, so she's from the Greater Accra Regional Hospital. So yeah. It's very important that you get to know about this, especially if you're a woman. Now, if you're a man and you're watching, you need to stay so you can also pass it on to your wife or yeah. your girlfriend. Okay, let's let's do it that way. Doc, Hi. how are you? Happy New Year. Many happy returns. Mm. And how's it going? Everything fine? Yes, please. Everything is fine. Okay, good. Good to have you in the studio. So, um, first of all, what exactly is this cancer? How... how as it explained to, to the lowest, you know, ordinary Ghanaian, okay. so we all can understand what exactly it is. Okay. So first and foremost, cancer means um, abnormal growth of cells. So if you say cervical oh, it's, it's cervical cancer. Yeah. yeah. So if something, it's my day today. It's my birthday today. So, so <laughs> if you talk about cervical cancer, mm. it means cancer of the cells in the cervix. So. <laughs> Martin. So the <laughs> cervix is the lower part of the, let's say the womb, okay. the uterus. So in Aka language, they will say awodenano. So the mouth okay. of the uterus. Okay. Yes, of course. So so basically, um, cervical cancer has to do with the womb. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the woman's private part. So they will, like the cervix also lines, like, like it forms part of the... Okay. Vagina. So you okay. have two parts of the service, the inner part and the outer part. So the inner part oh. also helps to line up the uh, vaginal canal. Okay. So it's all part of the reproductive system okay. of the woman. Yes. So there's connect some sort of connection. Yes, please. The inner and then the... Okay. Yes, all right. Uh, good to have that understanding. So what, what exactly does this cancer, you know, what, what is it about? Okay. What, what happens to it so or to the woman? So with the cervical cancer, it's literally caused by a virus. Okay. So this virus kind of infiltrates into the cells, like gets into the cells and cause the abnormal growth by destroying the DNA. Oh. So we have the virus cause, um, the name is human papilloma virus. Okay. So there are two types. So, okay, there are over 200 subtypes, but we have the high grade and the low grade. Okay. So high grade means that um, the formation of cancer is faster. It mm. progresses faster than the low grade. So you know how scientists will find like numbers for viruses or names. So with the low grade, we have um, six and eleven and other types. Okay. Then with the high grade, the one that has been found to cause the cancer is sixteen and eighteen. You have thirty-one, thirty-three, and others. Yes, of course. So this 
um, virus will get into the cells, destroy the good cells, infiltrate other cells, and then other organs in the body. Uh. Yes, of course. So when, when you're talking about other organs in the body, which are some of the organs that are um, vulnerable to this cancer? Okay, so you know how can, um, cancer spread? Yeah. So there are other parts where the cancer can spread. So we have, um, so after infiltrating, let's say, the cervix, it will get into the uterus and spread into the pelvic <coughs> wall. Then it can get to the bladder, the rectum, it can get into the lungs, wow. even to the bones. And that's really? when they present with other symptoms. I'll talk about that. Mm. Is that dangerous? Yes, it's dangerous. And it's also preventable. Oh, it's preventable. Yes. We'll look at that. But I mean, um, if you look at it globally, is it something that is very prevalent or yes. it's on the low? It's not on the low. It's actually the fourth leading cancer in women. Really? Yes. And globally, in 2018, it was found like 570,000 people were diagnosed and about 300,000 died of it. And in Ghana here, over 2,000 people have died of it. Seriously? Yes. Is that bad? Is that bad? How come we're, we're not talking too much about it? I, I'm, I'm hearing <laughs> about this conversation. I think this week when my producers told me that we're going to be talking about it, it, it doesn't look like we're, women are paying attention to it. Because the early, it doesn't have any form of symptoms during the early, like it's kind of silent. So okay. before you get to know that you have the cancer, then it's too late. So it takes, the disease progression can take about 15 to 30 years in a healthy woman. Wow. So you can have it and wouldn't know unless you have been educated and you need to do your screening. Okay. So what would what would trigger somebody to want to go and do screening? So you know how most people wait till they get sick. Yeah. So if the woman notices they have abnormal vaginal um, secretion, if they're having abnormal bleeding, pain during sexual intercourse, if they realize that like they have a foul smelling discharge, that's when they want to go and screen. Then through the screening, to be an incidental findings to, okay, well, you have this and you have that. Yes, of course. Mm. And uh, does it get bad in terms of some of the, um, s s the symptoms you're talking about? Yes. So we the have... The pain, the bleeding and all that. So these are part of the early stages of the cancer. But the late stage, you have weight loss, um, lower back pain. You can have loss of appetite. Even that is as the result. It cannot even work properly. Yes, of course. Okay. So now, now let's look at how you're likely to get this and who are at risk in the first place what are some of the things that you do that make you even be at risk of it okay so women are the ones that would have it because okay. we are the ones who have cervix okay okay so we have the risk factor so hpv itself is also a main risk factor as in persistent exposure so we have sexual history the age at which you have sex so if you have sexual activity at an early age then you will have um the HPV, or you can have the infection mm. in the sense that as well, well, not to catch you, where early age means maybe 15, 16. Oh, some 17. people can have sexual intercourse at age nine, eight. Some people are <sighs> being raped, like okay, exactly. okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. So, as I said, the disease progression takes about 15 to 30 years. So, you can imagine if someone has sexual intercourse at age nine, wow. so within her early 20s to her mid 30s, if she has the HPV infection and she didn't get it checked, it leads to the pre-conscious state and gets the conscious state, then it takes that shorter time. Wow. Then also, the number of um, sexual partners you have, multiple sexual partners. Mm. Yes, maybe you may not have multiple sexual partners, but your partner may you have... You have reference to me. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's a good uh, example. example. Yeah. And then maybe your partner may have multiple sexual partners, even though you do not have. Mm -hmm. So she will be exposed to the HP because she's not being with you alone. She's been with other partners. Mm. Okay, and also um, those with HIV, it decreases their immunity. So you know how your immunity helps you to fight illness. Yeah. Yes, of course. So, and those who are taking medication for other cancers, and those who have some autoimmune diseases. Uh, and then smoking has been found okay. as a risk factor. And it also, some research shows that some form of STI, also leads like helps to like co-infection will increase the risk of getting hpv like chlamydia okay yeah all right so um in clarity what we're what we're basically talking about is the fact that um, the woman just doesn't wake up and get that cancer no it has to be transferred yes. from another person to, to the another, woman yes and it has to be a male partner or it can be a female oral sex of course can also lead uh -huh. it has been <laughs> 
<laughs> that we found out that um, some HPV also exists in the mouth. So those engaging in oral sex can also get... Oral it. sex as in... Either male to male, female... Female to uh, female. Yeah, or male to female. Yes, of course. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, no, how, how often is one likely, you know, to get this through oral sex? The more you do it, like, it increases the exposure. Okay. So increased exposure is the likelihood. So if you do it once and the person has the high risk HPV, then unfortunately, yeah, sorry for that. Wow. Yes. So in, in, in that sense, I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to let us break it down. In that sense, <laughs> no, no, no it's, it's not an agenda, <laughs> but I'm still trying to understand this. So in that sense, if you have a partner mm -hmm. who does not move from one partner to the other, it means you're safe somewhat. No. Not like that. So let's say if that partner of yours has the high risk HPV or some form of the low risk HPV and you constantly have sex with even that person, there's increased exposure to you. So you might get it. Okay. So in, in this case, if, if I'm a man yeah. and I'm a woman, I prefer oral sex. Mm -hmm. So if I'm in process of licking my woman, oh no, don't worry. Mm -hmm. it, um, it means that the, between the two of us, who is at risk? The two of us or she's more Okay, at both of you in the sense that you will not get the cervical cancer. You can get genital what? There's there something called genital what? Yes, of course. Which what is that? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, uh, so the HPV, you have the low grades. Okay. That, these are the ones that causes about 90% of the genital what? Okay. You can also get cancer of the mouth, the throat. No, wait. There's possibility Le of you so getting cancer of the throat? Yes, of course. By oral sex? Yes, please. But a lot of people have said it's not true. It is true. Medically, is, is, this, is it what it is? Yes. Uh, research have shown that it can lead to throat cancer, mouth cancer. Yes, of course. Okay, yes. so in this case, both of you are all at risk. Yes, The woman please. is likely to get... The cervical cancer and, and also genital what? Oh, she can also get genital yes, what as well? Yes. What would that affect? So it also affects the genitalium, so can the vagina, like the labia majora, minor, like hair private parts, as you said. Yeah. So you see like a cauliflower-like The growth. butterfly, sort of? <laughs> yes, of course. Mm. So you see that there's this abnormal growth there. It, it's not painful. Okay. Yes, so you see that it looks like a cauliflower. Mm. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, if, if you just join us here on the show, uh, we're talking about cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. Now, that's uh, a cancer that affects women, but there are other aspects of it that if you're a man, you want to also be concerned about. And that's the conversation we're having here on the show today. The good thing is that if you've got any um, situation like that, uh, if you're going through something like that, uh, you can share with us if you don't mind. Uh, if you also have a certain clarity you want, Doctor, to uh, give you with regards to this topic, you can also let us know about it. Now, our WhatsApp line is active. You can uh, send your messages over there and we'll be reading them. We'll try and see maybe a bit later if we can open the phone lines for a couple of minutes for you to also uh, let us know what you think about it. Now, if, if you have a personal experience, we'll be more than glad uh, to hear your story and how you're coping with it. Doc is going to tell us how we can prevent them and uh, obviously, one of the prevention will be stop or I say, but we'll, we'll start having way around it by the way. You know, so Doc is going to share that with us here on the show, but you can uh, join us. Dr. I Everill is uh, my guest in the studio from the Greater uh, Accra Regional Hospital. Now, Doc, mm -hmm. so um, it means that everybody's at risk somewhat. Yes, please. Now, let's look at a way we can prevent this. Okay. The, the, the possible way, okay. because I'm sure a lot of people will still sit at home and say that, oh, this is a sex thing we have been talking about. We hear uh, that, you know, can we have other ways of doing things without necessarily have to be scared of things like this? Okay, so the prevention, you have various options. So we have the HPV vaccination itself. So some vaccines have been developed um, over the period of some okay. years. Okay, but before you talk about the vaccines, I understand that there's some screening that yes. actually goes on yeah. as well. So, okay, can we take a look at that? So processes? with the screening, um, we have different types of screening. Okay. So we have the pap smear, we have the VIA, that's the visual inspection with acetic acid. Then you have the HPV DNA test. Mm. So this um, procedure, you go to the doctor's office, you be the woman, the woman will be made to lie down okay. and should be exposed adequately. So a, a device called a speculum will be used to introduce into her private parts to open up 
the vagina to visualize the service. Mm -hmm. So with the pap smear, you, there's a brush that we used to sweep in and around the cervix. And you put it on the slide and then... Okay, so doc, yeah. um, we have that on the screen yeah, right now. Exactly. So maybe it's so that we get better understanding of it. Uh, so this is... Um, yeah, doc. Yeah, so as you can see, the device going in is called a speculum. So it's introduced into the vaginal wall, deep inside. Then you see how they are opening it up. So you see the cervix. So then that's when um, a brush would pass through inside the device and sweep in the cervix and around it. So that's the okay, brush. So that's the brush. That's yes. how it looks in yes. real life. Yes, of course. It this is the cervical broom. So you, then you go. This thing looks like jack saw or something. <laughs> no. yeah. what, what exactly is that? No, so is it painful? It's uncomfortable. And if mm. you have some, it's a little bit, some people say it's painful for them. So, and then... So, it means some, it can be painful for some, it will yes, not be it depends on individual okay. differences. And you have to do this without any form of um, uh, medication to make the person a bit numb or something. Oh, no, it, please. They'll use a like gel that. around the device. Okay. And then gently pass it through. Gently, I like gently pass it through because I, I, I'm imagining how uncomfortable this, yes. this will be. So, this is how you get screened for yes. it. Yes, please. And when you when you you get the screening, then it means what? If you have it, then you'll so, be told. So if so, it takes some days to get the results. So if you are having a positive pap smear, then there's something called coposcopy. So that one is more detailed. Like you use other machines okay. to take to look into the cervix, the vaginal walls, and then also use some gun or an instrument to take some of the cells so, out. Okay. So it's called coposcopy with biopsy. So biopsy you are studying the cells. Mm. So then this the, so this one will tell you the staging of the cancer. Okay. But positive pathway does not mean that you would like have the cancer. You know you have some tests, false positive, false negative. So mm. you just need to make sure that you are fine. Okay. So at that stage, um how I mean, obviously, you made it understand from the beginning that it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. Now, can this lead to loss of life? Yes, please. It does. Yes. So in that case, we'll come to that aspect yeah. of it and how we can even manage that as family and as individuals. Mm -hmm. But I want us to know, uh, and that's, uh, that when it, it's, it's diagnosed that the person has the cancer, how do you pass this information to the um, um, patient in your office? Okay, so you know in medical times, you have something called breaking bad news. So you need to find a good setting... Um, you sit the patient down, you make sure that maybe you have a tissue available because some patients would cry. Mm. So you then, so before the procedure is done, you would be, as, like the whole procedure will be explained to, to you. you as the patient. So you know where, where, where you're you are getting to. Exactly. And then they'll tell you the possible outcome. So prior to that, you've already been psyched. Okay. And then during the breaking of bad news, we then explain to you the test result, mm. what we found and what it means, and the treatment options available. Mm. So if it is the bad stage, then we'll let you know. If it's the pre-conscious state, we'll let you know. If it's within stage one, stage two, like also let you know. As a okay, so now between the, the, the preventive and the treatment, which one would we want to look at first? Let's take a look at how to prevent exactly. it, and then we'll look at the treatment. So it, it, what do I stay off? to make sure I don't get even close to this cancer. <laughs> okay. So as I said, screening is very important. It dictates the preconscious. That is patient. constant screening. Yes, they have, yes, constant Are there screening. periods that you're yes. supposed to do it? What's oh, the interval? Three, three years. Or oh, every three years, you every have to do it every three yeah, years. Yeah, but it depends because if you have a positive pap smear, the number of times you have to screen also increases. Okay, so you can have the positive pap smear and don't have the, the the cancer itself. So you can have the positive pap smear, and in, when they do the corposcopy, the histology may say, okay, you do not have the cancer itself. You are in the pre-cancer okay, state. Okay, so then you start from treatment. There, exactly. Even the cancer state, you can also start your treatment, depending okay. on the staging. Okay. Yes, of course. So the doctor or the specialist involved will explain the treatment options available mm. to you. You don't force it to the patient. The patient also have to be part of the management plan mm. so that mm. he, the patient will decide whether she wants it or not. Mm. I, I have the feeling that this is more or less like an HIV um, AIDS because you, you have the HIV, you're not at the AIDS stage yet, 
you have to get to a setting level before now you have the eight itself this is also more like you have a setting stage and then before you get to the cancer itself where you know you are in that stage where it's deadly or you may lose your life okay so you know every disease have its own progression okay so we have uh, the normal stage so let's say your cells are normal mm. then you have the abnormal staging so then it takes some time before it gets to the conscious state so every disease has its own progression so likewise hiv it doesn't mean it's like AIDS, no but every disease in its own natural way of okay yeah. all right so we have the stages uh on on the screens right now maybe we can do a bit of explanation so, now so the healthy service so as you can see the first picture on top the healthy cell, you don't see it. So you see the small hole in the middle? Yeah. So that's the, so let's say the whole small hole to the pink side is the cervix. Okay. okay. So as you can see, you don't see any abnormal growth or anything around. Yeah. Okay. So now the stage, so you have stage one. Okay. With the stages, you have different subtypes. Mm. I can't go into details. But with stage one, as you can see, the cells is just like, there's something white over there is around it around yeah and you can see that it's not the same as the pink healthy cells you see yeah so in stage one usually they'll say that this um, cancer is confined to the cervix and the uterus mm. okay now stage one b as you can see it has taken all over yeah the cervix yeah. so it means that it's spreading it's okay. getting into deeper tissues of course then as you can see stage two b it has it has moved beyond the cervix and it's getting into the uterus and there's bleeding. It makes the cells also weak. Wow. And no cancer cells too wants to feed, so they'll create their own blood vessels mm. to increase small blood supply to it. And then that increases the risk of bleeding as well. So there are in, 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 in how many? Um, four stages in total? Yeah, there are the first. So the four stages, even though we have, st so stage one, you have A, like, so it's divided into a lot of uh, different uh, subtypes, yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. Wow, this is crazy. So now, uh, how do we prevent this? So apart from the screen, we have the HPV vaccination, as I said. Oh, this is a vaccination? For yes, that. of course. So the vaccination, we have um, two types. So we have the Gardasil 9 and Cervarix. So the Gardasil is for both boys and girls. You give it to um, teenagers, like children. So WHO recommends that from age 9 up to 26, because they found that, that during that stage, they uh, let's, say, let's assume someone 9 years will not have any form of sexual activity mm. so if you give it to someone who is not exposed to any form of sexual activity the efficiency of the person is more than somebody who is already exposed to sexual activity and probably may have an hpv okay. infection but that does not mean that it will not protect that individual mm. you get it mm. so the h um, the goddess um protect against both high risks and the low, low risk. risk but the severe risk is for um Females only, yes, of course. Okay, so that's how we we do. And then, and is it available? Is it readily available? Yes, yeah, available in most um, centers uh, centers in Ghana. So we have the family planning um, department in Kolebo, that the okay. family medicine department. We also have some centers at Kofona Noche Hospital, and some sub hospital in Kumasi as well. Okay, we have some to Adelaide Hospital. So when you get to the family planning department. And you get, um, you want to tell them you want your vaccination. They'll test you, they'll screen, they'll ask other questions before you get your vaccine. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Interesting, interesting stuff there. But uh, I don't know, maybe you want to just be a part of this conversation. We're talking about <laughs> cervical cancer, and uh, it's one cancer that it's deadly. You may not be aware of that, but what it is right now, even men and women are all at risk. <laughs> it's supposed to be for women, but. No, the cervical they, cancer is only for the woman. For the woman. But the HPV can lead to other cancers. Which affects me the men. Yes, it can lead to penile cancer, it can lead to... And so we are all part of it. <laughs> <laughs> they, have, they found ways to rob us inside. We have, we've always found a way to get us involved. No. But we're, we're glad we're also here and supporting them and making sure that they get tested and all of that. Now, maybe you've not had your vaccination yet. Uh, you can go and then uh, check. Uh, you get screened and then you have your vaccination. But you can join us here on the show. Let's see, we can open the phone lines for a couple of minutes okay. uh, for you to uh, share your thoughts with us here on the show. Uh, the line is on your screen, so you can... Um, okay, kindly give me the tablet. Let me just see if we have some messages on the uh, WhatsApp line. But you can give us a call and let us know what you think 
about the conversation if you're uh, going through that process as well so you can share that with me uh if if, if you are scared about it uh, maybe we can make it even less you know, <laughs> scary for you here on the show doc is here uh, any question that you want to ask a doc uh, she's going to answer that for you as well so uh, that's what we're talking about here. Yeah. Doc, we're going to get into the treatment bit. I'll, I'll still try and then find some messages that I can read and all that. Uh, yes, the prevention aspect of it. So we should stop oral sex. No, it's... <laughs> Why am I so interested in that? Don't ask me. I'm, I'm interested for a reason. <laughs> you just need to be careful. You can't stop someone from enjoying sexual So you can, you can give us a way we can go about it without having throat cancer. Oh, no, go I can't me. guarantee Benny. that. <laughs> Bernice, the man supports me. This is our field. <laughs> we are in trouble. Bernice, how are you? I'm doing great. What about you? Ah, it's my birthday. What can I say? I'm grateful to hey, God. Hey, happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please share with us uh, what you think about it. And I want to ask the doctor if the cervical cancer is um, inherited. Because okay. um, I have two aunties who suffered from it, and one is dead. But glory be to God, one is okay now. So I don't know if it can be inherited in the family. Okay, Thank doc. you. Okay, so some research has shown that um, cervical cancer runs in family. Like the way breast cancer also run in family. Okay. But that does not mean that automatically the person would have cervical cancer. As I said, risk factors. So if you have a family history of cervical cancer, then you have to take care of yourself. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go to um, Dede. Dede. Yes, Dede. boy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Dede. I hope you're good. I'm good. Good to have you on the show. Just pray for me. That's all I need from you. Uh, what would you want to share with us, though? Yes. Today, speaking with you, the thing is, with the local women, you can get cervical cancer. So, it's dangerous. I said, I need the one I had, my valve was full. And it was itchy. Like, the rest is not. And yeah, by heart, I'm begging girls. You should take good care of our private parts. Wow. Wow. It can lead to something in which you don't like. Because they check in the beer and pamba, so we should give it a try. Mm. Just go. Go and try now. It's no good. It's really, really bad. Okay. Okay. Lily, thanks Thank for sharing your, your story with us. We appreciate you. And take off yourself, okay? <laughs> Ezekiel. Hello, sir. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Good to have you on the show. Go ahead. What would you want to tell us? Yes, sir. I'm doing well, sir. Okay, um, I think you're listening to yourself. You can reduce the volume on your TV set, and uh, it will be good. Uh, I want to ask, doctor, whether cervical cancer can affect your fertility. It can affect your fertility, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, she's going to answer right away. Doc. Okay, so um, with cervical cancer, yes, it can affect the fertility in the sense that if the whole uterus is affected, and it's taken out, then you can't do That's it. it, yeah. yeah. That's it. Okay, so let me see if I can go through. Uh, please, is the cervical cancer vaccine expensive? Honestly, I can't really tell. Unless you go to the centers and then find out. Okay, all right. So kindly check into any of the hospitals you're close to and uh, ask about it. I'm sure they'll be able to help you on that because it differs from doc um, hospital to the hospital, hospital, baby. Yeah. Um, Evelyn, right? Hello, Evelyn, are you there? Hello? Okay, whilst I'm trying to get Evelyn now, uh, this one says, Hi, I'm Miyamichi from Takwa. My question is, can a female be infected Hello? by this uh, uh, cervical cancer through Hello? masturbation? I'm interested in that. Well, hold on for me. Uh, Evelyn, you're back. Evelyn, how are you doing? Hello? Hello, Evelyn, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Evelyn! Okay, Evelyn, uh, let's sort you out, but before that, Doc. Hmm, this one, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Doc, it can't, it can't affect masturbation. No, because it's true sexual contact with another that's individual. That's how you... Yeah, that's how I... You're exempted, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, it's Yamiche. Yamiche, you're exempted. <laughs> Do it diligently. <laughs> uh, who is that? Who is that? <laughs> Paulina. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine how Yamicha is feeling right now. Hello. Uh, oh my God. Paulina, talk to me. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I hope you're good. Yeah. Good. Talk to me. Birthday, bye. Ah, uh, thank you, girl. Thank you. 
Anyway. My, my problem is that thing. My... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you uh, see, me and you right now, you can share anything with me, okay? Feel but free. I don't know if it's, um, yeah, hello. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Polly? Hello. I can hear you, go ahead. Okay, okay. Uh, I I have the same problem, but I don't know what it is, porn or, uh, so like, we from this area, I don't know if he mentioned uh, the sentence, but all is in Greater Accra. But what of we those from other regions? I'm from multi region, so is it available here so that I can go and then check, check. and have the and see if I can get the vaccine to take? Okay, Doc. like my earlier said, it's very unbearable uh, experience. In fact, it is no good. It's, it's, it's really not good. So, yeah. if she can help us with that, thank you. Okay, thank you, Doc. Okay, I do not know whether it's available at OT region, but I would find out and get back to you. Okay, okay. So, um, um, make sure you listen or you you keep watching the health segment on this uh, show. Uh, we're going to update you because the whole of this month we're trying as much as possible to handle this situation. Okay, so mm -hmm. we may just bring it back again and talk about it, and uh, we'll, we'll get the. Uh, um, the answer you need and maybe we can just check on our social media pages too as well okay. i'm sure we'll be able to uh, pass on that information to you abigail yes please how are you doing i'm fine thank you Good and happy birthday show. too thank you thank you so much um i would like to ask the doctor if uh, my conditions has got anything to related to cervical cancer um, of late, I've not been really having my menstrual period flowing as usual. Okay. It's more or less like stuck somewhere. It comes in, in drops, and whenever it comes, it's, um, it's dark in color. And after then, too, whenever I have sexual intercourse, I have pain in my abdomen, and my tummy keeps protruding. It never okay. gets down. And I keep having constant pain, either at my left side or my right side. So I want to know if, in any way, it is connected to cervical cancer. Okay, Doc will give you the answer. Doc, can you help with that? Okay, from what she has said, uh, it's not really connected to cervical cancer. Okay. She needs to go to the hospital to actually check. It could be something else. Something else. It can be fibrous or any other thing. Okay. Not to scare you, but um, just make a quick check at the hospital and let's see what comes up, okay? Okay, Abigail, thank you for calling in. Now, this one says, please, can a pregnant woman get uh, cervical, uh, cervical cancer? And how can it be prevented before she gives birth, if possible? Is, is, that, is that a possibility? Yeah. So, yes, a pregnant woman can get it. Because oh. if you are pregnant, does not exempt you from sexual activity with your partner. That's so, true. And then during pregnancy, some research have shown that, yes, there's increased risks of getting cervical cancer. Because during pregnancy, your immunity comes down. So that's when, if you have the HPV infection already existing in yeah. your service, then it, it will... It opens up for that yeah. too. So, okay. All right. Uh, that's your answer. Uh, this one says, so can this cancer affect the monthly flow of blood of a woman? So the monthly flow is a different ballgame to that of um, cervical cancer. There are other factors that affect the monthly flow. Number one, pregnancy itself can stop your monthly okay. flow. We have uterine fibrous and other um, hormonal condition and other um, reproductive conditions mm. that can affect your monthly flow. Mm. So until proper check takes done, yeah. you'll not be able to know which one yes. is affecting okay. the flow of blood. Okay, good. Now this one says, hi, good morning. Uh, this is John in Tamale. My question is this. I would, I would like to ask you, what is the effect of the HPV to the male who transmits it? And uh, can we say cervical cancer is an STI? Okay, so yes, of course. Cervical cancer is spread through um, sexual activity. So HPV is a sense of sexual transmitted infection. Okay. So as I said earlier, males too can get infection from HPV. So as uh, penile cancer can, so HPV can lead to penile cancer. Mm. If you're a male and you like to sleep with your other uh, male partners, you can give them anal cancer. Oh. You can also get genital wart. You can also get mouth <laughs> cancers and throat cancers. Hmm. 
This thing is a whole lot of scary things, man. <laughs> we have no idea. Now, um, another one of the SS, uh, the genital wax. I, I've experienced it when I was in school. Uh, it was not painful, but it will be growing small, small, like a, a cauliflower. Like, as I spoke. Oh, you spoke about that, yeah. yeah. Oh, dude, I hope you're taking care of yourself. <laughs> you need to check yourself, yeah? We need you alive, so yeah. Do your best for us. Uh, this one says, hello, good morning, Joy family. Okay, um, let me see if I can really get some of the messages coming through. But uh, pretty much, uh, that's what we have. But let's get, let's get into, so, um, the treatment. Let's, let's jump on the treatment now. At least we've done um, mm. um, some of the preventive and all of that. How do we treat this? Is there a way you have to pass the vaccination to just, you know, keep you going? Okay, so... If you have it already, what do you do? So, with the treatment, it depends. So, it depends on the staging. So, some, some of the options are surgeries. So we have radiotherapy. So we use high energy to kill, kill the cells. Exactly. And you have chemotherapy using chemicals. Mm. Then um, with some of the words, we use cryotherapy in the sense that we use nitrogen oxide to freeze the cells. That will reduce the progression. If you have the what to there's other form of um, treatment that the doctors will make available for you. Okay, so it's pretty much simple. Like this is something that you know. Once you know you're getting to that end, yeah. you're getting there. There's no way you can sit back and say, "Oh, it's not something I've experienced before, so I'm going to get sit there you and let whatever happens to me happens to me." Yeah. Now, a, 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 what would make one die out of this cancer? Oh, when it's um, advanced, in the sense that it's spreads to other organs, the lungs, the bones, and. Um, it really makes someone, it's actually bad when you see someone. Mm. In the how, how does it, what does the person look? Do we have a picture of that? Oh, like, um, like anyone with cancer, mm. the person who loses weight, like the person loses appetite, the legs get swollen. Oh. Even if you trace the lungs, you have a lot of fluid in your lungs. Like it's, it's a whole... Scary. Yeah. And then when you have it that stage, we do something called the palliative care. Yes, you can't take the disease away. You can't cure it at that stage. But um, you want to reduce the pain, mm. the discomfort of the individual. So then you do the supportive care to make the person at ease till the person passes away. Mm. One important thing about these cancers and is the fact that, you know, family now have a lot of responsibility yeah. with whoever that you're living with that has the cancer. And now, from your point of view as a doctor, what would you want to tell families, uh, especially when they know the cancer is, is not that bad, that they can all assist and make sure that the person gets back on their feet Okay, so you need to support the individual because this is a whole emotional um, journey because the individual will not be happy, would be sad. You need to support in terms of finances, in terms of love. You need to be there for the individual, like help the individual go through from one stage to another. Mm -hmm. So my question, which is very, uh, no, not, <laughs> not personal, before you guys start <laughs> interpreting it somewhere. Now, if I'm living with my partner and my partner has it, how do I make love to my partner? It means that at that point we can't do anything again? So under prevention, you can use the condom because the condom oh. will prevent skin to skin. Okay. Um, yes. And um, you need to let your partner get tested, like make sure that she has undergoing the treatment, like she is being treated for it. So if she gets tested early and we detect it early, the treatment would help to like prevent the cancer state. Okay. But if she already has the cancer, then the surgery and other things I spoke about can help. But if it's advanced stage, then... Mm. So when all those are cleared, you know, like yeah. treatment are done and everything, you can go back to your normal life yes, without a condom if you don't like condoms? Yes, and also you have to prevent having multiple... As for them. Multiple sexual partners is very important. Okay, that's a major thing, by yeah. the way. And because then you quit smoking, because smoking is also an anorex factor. Oh, if you smoke, that's you, you mentioned that. But is that bad? Yes, because smoking has been found to destroy the DNA of the cervix. So oh. if you have the HPV inve infection already, the cells are questionable, and you want to further destroy it by smoking. Wow. Yeah. Wow. In terms of the women, if if you have such condition, how do you manage yourself? How do you take care of yourself? Okay, so you have to go for your routine screening. You also make sure that you don't um, expose yourself in the sense like you have to have one sexual partner and make sure your sexual partner too does not have multiple sexual partners. And also take care of yourself as a lady, 
like personal hygiene, mm -hmm. of course. You need to, you need to, how do you even wash that place in the, in the first, oh, don't, what? <laughs> <laughs> because it, it's part of the, you know, healthy living, yeah. you know, but in that, where it is right now, if you want to even wash, you can't wash. Well, it's self is there, is, oh. Actually, God um, made himself clean things. Okay, so we're about to say big shout outs to God right now. <laughs> 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 what happens there? Also, we have some cells that produce mucus. So the mucus and other things helps to cleanse the place. Uh, you don't need to push something up there. Really? Yes, of course. It's naturally cleansing. You just need to wash with water. You don't need to use high detergents to kill the nice bacteria that is already helping to protect the place. Wow. Yes. So why can't the same thing, you know, deal with the, 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 the cancer when it's about to happen? So naturally, most women have already had the HPV infection. But naturally, it resolves on its own. The body takes care of itself. Okay. But you know how I explained the risk factors. If you have persistent HPV infection, then... So it gets weaker and weaker. And then the, you can lead then, to the cancer. Okay. Even some people may be in the pre-conscious state, but it will resolve on its own. But some people do not. So, yeah. I see. Uh, interesting stuff. I don't know what your story looks <laughs> like. And uh, maybe if you're just about giving up because you've tried everything possible, uh, you're not getting the results you want. And so you're not too, you know, um, uh, you're not too good because at the end of the day, so many things are, you know, uh, um, everything.